Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Pete from My Jewelry Bench, and today we're going to be covering this beautiful Cellini Rolex watch. This watch is an Italian design, 18 karat gold case. Um, it came out obviously with a broken crystal. It's got some damage to the dial that we can't repair, but there's some damage that we can fix on the dial, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And of course, change the battery because that needs to be done. This is, yes, a battery operated Rolex. So for those who don't know about the Cellini line, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in the uh, in a few minutes. I'm not really going to make this whole video a little history of the Cellini line, but I do want to talk a little bit about it so that you guys know a little bit uh, something about the Cellini line. The Cellini line by Rolex was named after the famed artist and sculptor, a goldsmith uh, named Benvenuto Cellini. He, he was uh, well, well renowned in Italy and he typically modeled his, his art in a very conservative manner. And that was kind of the line of thinking that Rolex used. The watches are very, very elegant and very conservative in style. Their Cellini line has been around for a very long time. Uh, and for those of you who don't know about it, it it's both mechanical and quartz, but uh, there's only one watch left in the Rolex line that's labeled Cellini. It is the, ro the rose gold moon face. And that's pretty much all that's left of the Cellini line. There are many, many different styles. I've worked on many of these watches over the years. They're very beautiful, very desirable. The ladies' watches are just elegant. So are the men's. If you don't know much about it, go check it out and take a look at it. What I have to do today is get this watch movement out of the case because we have to change the crystal on this case. Um, I, this is not your typical Rolex. Obviously, this is more like a, a much more common watch, but uh, a much more elegant common watch. And I'll start by obviously removing the crown and stem, and we'll get that out. And then the case screws that hold the watch movement in place, we'll have to remove those and get that out. Um, for those of you who don't know, yes, Rolex does still have a quartz watch on the market and did make a few quartz watches, but they never really got into the quartz watches uh, all that much. Um, it was pretty much the downfall of Omega when Omega went to uh, quartz watches in the 70s. And Omega, remember, was the most popular brand watch up until that point. As soon as they stuck batteries in their watches, Rolex really just outtook them. So you can see we've got the uh, movement out of the case now and the uh, the indicator at the nine position has fallen off. So we have to put that back onto the dial. And you can see it's got uh, a couple little pins that hold it in place. We also want to clean up this dial, remove any glass fragments that are on it, because uh, anytime you have a watch with a broken crystal, glass is going to get everywhere. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and get all of that out, clean it, blow it out, do whatever you have to do to make sure that there's nothing left in the, in the watch movement. Luckily, um, the customer did pull the stem out as soon as the watch crystal broke, um, as there was a big chunk sitting in between the hand and the dial, and that would have broken the watch movement had he not done that. So remember that if you ever break your watch crystal and there's a glass fragments stuck between the hand and the dial, uh, pull the stem out to the second click. Uh, most of the time, it's the second click to stop the watch from running or remove the battery because what will happen is those gears will get damaged from the battery and the quartz trying to push them and uh, it could damage the watch significantly. These are, uh, well, the last Cellini, as you can see, I'll put a picture up on the screen, that's about $27,000, and of course you wouldn't want to damage that from just a crystal breaking. So you can see I'm just taking a look at the dial, making sure there's no more glass fragments on it. There is a scratch on the minute hand, there's not much I can do about that. Um, if I start polishing it, I'm gonna actually do more damage to it, so I'm not gonna polish those hands out. So I like to use a clean piece of Rotico to go ahead and try to remove any debris from the dial. Uh, apologize for getting this off camera. I was really concentrating on the little glass shards to make sure they were off. But I try, try to wipe it down and not to leave any little marks on the dial. Sometimes Rotico can't, will do it, especially with a black dial. But pretty much with any other color, you can get everything looking really clean. The last thing I'll do is just wipe down the hands and make sure that there's no debris on the hands. You can see how real elegant this watch is um, this is an older Cellini 18 karat gold band and case beautiful watch uh, and you can see that the indicator at the nine o'clock position is missing we're going to put that back on that'll happen sometimes if the watch takes a hard drop and I pretty much think that this watch fell face first onto something hard which is a pretty common problem uh, it does happen 
uh, to a lot of watches down here in Florida. So, you know, everybody's got tile floor and that's not very forgiving. So you can see here's the movement. It's a 6620 quartz movement from Rolex. It is their design. It is not a, a, a brand that's relabeled. Um, it's a very high quality quartz watch and you can see it's really well made. I enjoy working with these watches because they are very well made. Let's see probably better than an Aneta movement. Next thing I'll do is remove the crystal from the case, and then we'll check that gasket. This does have a nylon gasket in it also, so we'll, we'll either go ahead and replace that if we can. Um, sometimes I'll reuse them if they're not damaged, but uh, most of the time I'll replace them. Once we get that in there, it's, it's a good idea to put the nylon gasket in the watch and then measure the crystal size because it's, it's real hard to do um, if you don't know the crystal size. So I'm going to clean this all up, get any debris off of it, and then we will put that nylon gasket back in the watch. These can be a little tricky if you've never done these before, but don't worry, they do fit in. They're supposed to be a tight fit, and they will kind of just kind of pressure fit along that. The crystal will actually squeeze that nylon gasket and hold it in place. So here we've got the crystal for this watch, and we will go ahead and get this seated onto the uh, gasket in the case. It's always a good idea if you're handling the crystals to use uh, some kind of a glove or a covered finger. You don't want to get fingerprints all over these and then try to clean it up later, although you can. Once I've got that seated correctly, now I'll just use the nylon crystal press and uh, press that crystal down into the case. Once that's done, I'll put the case aside and we'll start working on the rest of the watch. So here is the watch, and I get a little post-it note out to put the cement on. I'm going to be using, uh, to adhere this, I'm going to be using a little bit of crystal cement. And that crystal cement is nice to use because it really gives you enough working time to get it seated correctly. And if you have to remove it uh, for any particular reason, it comes off very easy uh, with some unsharp tools that you can clean up relatively quick if you make a mistake. And we all have made, made mistakes doing this once in a while, so you just got to be conscious of it. Those two pins will get a little bit of glue on them, and I'm just going to dip those pins in the glue, and then we'll seat that onto the dial itself. This particular indicator has a curvature to it, which makes it very easy to put in the correct way. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And if you're not careful, I've seen people put them in upside down. Um, it does happen. You really have to look at the watch. Once that's seated correctly, I'm just going to apply a little pressure to it and we'll let that sit for about 20 minutes and dry up. And that's about all you need for the crystal cement. It'll, it'll dry relatively quick. It stays a little bit elastic while it does hold well and it will take a lot of abuse. So it's something to think about if you don't use that GS crystal cement, it does work real well. Next thing I'll do is just set the time and just make sure that the hands don't interfere with any of the indicators. Make sure the hands are clean. And then I'll go around with the Rotico again and just wipe down any indicator that's got any issues. Um, again, here can you see I'm just kind of wiping down the hand, just making sure that there's no debris on it. This one had a little bit more debris on it. Uh, and I want to make sure we get that off before we put it back in the case. Now the Cellini line, I see typically more women's Cellini watches from Rolex than I do men's. This is the first men's watch I've seen in quite a while in the Cellini line. And again, the only Cellini left is the one that uh, is the rose gold moon face. That's the only one they're selling now. And I imagine at some point in time in the near future, it'll probably be discontinued as almost all of the, well, as every other Cellini model has been discontinued at this point. It's hard to tell on this dial, but there are some scratches left by the cracked glass. Unfortunately, um, it's, it's cracked and has deep gouges in the dial. There's not a lot I can do to repair this. We could send the dial out. Um, if you do want to have your dials restored, just be aware that the price to restore dials uh, at this point in time is anywhere from about $200 to as much as $1,000, depending on the dial. Once that uh, case is all cleaned out, we'll go ahead and put the movement back in. And you're going to seat this in one position. You can see there's the hole for the stem and the crown to go into, and that's going to line up good with the case tube. 
This particular watch, again, is 18 karat gold. It's got some wear to it. You know, the customer does wear it all the time, which is a, which is a nice thing. It's nice to see it. So, But you want to work on this very carefully as you don't want to cause any damage to the watch uh, while working on it or fixing it. Once that's done, I'm going to tighten up that clutch screw or that stem screw, and we will make sure that stem pulls in and out to the first and second position. I believe this only has one click. Now that the movement's been placed back into the case and the stem and crown have been inserted, it's time to put the case screws or case clamps back onto the watch. So we're going to go ahead and just line these up. Most uh, case clamps are pretty easy to tell which way they go. Can be a little difficult with some of these models to get the screws lined up correctly depending on the alignment of the clamp. But uh, if you're just careful, take your time, you can get those screws to fall into place relatively easy. Grab your jeweler screwdriver and just make sure that you uh, tighten that down straight and even into the holder. Now what I do is I just clamp one side about halfway. I'll screw that screw down about halfway. I'll work on the up opposite side or the other clamps, depending on how many there are. Typically there's, there's two, you'll see sometimes three, and I have seen as many as four, but uh, on the Cellini line, it's always been two. Get that second clamp in position, and then I'll grab the screw for that. Again, you're just going to be careful. You're going to line that up. Once the screw is seated, just like the other side, you're going to go ahead and grab your screwdriver and just tighten it down. No, I probably, uh, well, I know I did, I tightened that one down all the way and then I went back to the first one and I tightened that down so that it was seated correctly. Once that's done, we can go on to the next step. So for this point, we're gonna actually remove the old battery. We're gonna grab a new one and put that battery in the watch and just make sure that everything is working correctly. Once that battery is seated, I'll grab the case. I'll check the case for any debris, any uh, problems with the gasket. This one's good. I changed it, put a new gasket on it, and we're going to actually uh, clamp this, this down. Before I do that, I'm going to actually go clean it up a little bit because there's some debris on that. Some of these cases you can kind of close with your hands. They still are water resistant. They are not dive watches, they're not sports watches. So please don't think that you can really go swimming at the beach or in the pool for any length of time with a Cellini model. They're really meant to be elegant watches um, with water resistance. So we've got that done. Let's go ahead and set the time. And you can see the new crystal and just cleaning it up makes it look a whole lot nicer. Once the time is set, I'm going to let this run for a while and make sure that it works. The, uh, the Cellini line, like I said, I see mostly women's Cellini watches, and mostly those are in for batteries. Um, I very rarely see a broken watch uh, with a broken crystal on these models, but it does happen occasionally. And if it takes a hard enough fall, these dials, just like any other watch dial, uh, the indicators can pop off of them. And I've seen a heck of a lot of Rolexes lately that have been dropped. I don't know what's going on or if it's common in the summertime, but it seems to be happening a lot. And the indicators, uh, especially the aftermarket dials, the, the diamonds tend to pop out. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of dial repairs lately. Again, this watch is 18 karat gold. It's it's worn not significantly i'd say um, on a scale of one to ten it's probably worn uh, i'd say it's probably an eight it's got some bending and flex to the band um, originally when this watch was new it would have been pretty tight and that's it for the cellini watch repair uh, that was a crystal and a dial repair cleaning up a little bit and a new battery that's pretty much all we did to this i hope you enjoyed this video guys if you did please give it a thumbs up if you're not a subscriber consider subscribing to my channel check out the the website at www.myjewelrybunch.com and thanks for watching take care